Wait, wait. Calm down first. From his place, nestled between Shen Qingqiu's legs, Wu Bingke shifted even further upward. But this disciple saw something very interesting today. I'm afraid I won't be able to calm down for the next few days. Shi Zi, what should I do? After resting for over a month at Changqiu Mountain, Wu Binghe had finally recovered his original form. Shen Qingqiu knew this day wouldn't end peacefully, but he still said with composure, "That's easy. What did you see? Bring it here and show this master, so we can discuss it together. But before that, get in a more normal position, so we can talk properly." Wu Binghe nodded and ignored the last request entirely. Okay, then I'll let Shu Zun see. Slow and measured, he retrieved a thin little booklet from his labels. The little booklet was illustrated in a flowery style, rather gaudy at first glance, not to mention familiar. Shen Qingqiu was still pondering this familiarity when Wu Binghe flipped it open, straightened his back, and began to recite in a bright, clear voice. One night fell, Wu Binghe lay in bed, tossing and turning, unable to find slumber. He was used to passing out on the cold floor of the woodshed, and suddenly, finding himself in a bed, especially when the Shi Zun he so longed for lay not far away, just on the other side of a single screen in a gauze canopy. The day's solicitous inquiries and attentive concern replayed before his eyes, fanning the fire in the pit of his stomach hotter, and hotter, higher, and higher. Shen Qingqiu was speechless. Luo Binghe continued reading with a straight face. Luo Binghe felt his way to the bed, cloth. Rustled beneath his hands as he loosened the ties of Shen Qingqiu's inner robe, and when he reached beneath the layer of cloth, he found fine, smooth skin, and strong, supple muscle. Dazed and spellbound, he tore the waist sash in two. Shen Qingqiu cast a glance at the waist sash Luo Binghe had just furiously torn open and tossed on the ground. Goosebumps rose all over his body. What was he supposed to say to this? Luo Binghe lowered the booklet, looked up, and said in all seriousness, "It says here that this disciple lost his virginity the same night he moved out of the woodshed. In the flames of desire, lurid intentions bloomed, and I snuck into the bamboo houses in a room in the middle of the night." Under cover of darkness, and while Shu Zun was in the grip of a nightmare, unable to move an inch, did such and such and so and so, amorous and tender, until the break of dawn. What the fuck? If I remember correctly, Wu Bing was only fifteen back then. Utter devoid of conscience, perverse lunacy. Wu Bing continued as he flipped. Though the Luo Binghe in this novel is more audacious than this disciple, and dares to act more boldly, his feelings for Shi Zun aren't far from the truth. If you really dare to act like that, this master couldn't guarantee he wouldn't take your life on the spot," Shen Qingqiu replied. Luo Binghe leaned down and kissed Shen Qingqiu's earlobe, warm breath. Spilled over the rim of his ear as he cajoled him. Shi Zun, weren't you the one who said we would explore together? At least give it a second chance. He didn't dare look. If that text burned out his eyes, there was no way to get them replaced. Wu Binghe chuckled. You won't look. Then allow this disciple to read it for you. Voice expressive, he went on. After Shi Zun lost his chastity to Luo Binghe that night, he severely punished this rebellious disciple and intended to banish him 
from Chancho Mountain sect. But in the end, he couldn't bear to do it. He merely treated him coldly until the Immortal Alliance Conference was beset by sudden misfortune. Master and disciple were separated. Several years passed, and when they reunited, Shen Qingqiu finally fell into Luo Binghe's clutches. Look here, Shi Zun. The Huanghua Palace Water Prison chapter is really something else. Shen Qingqiu couldn't compete with Luo Binghe's stubbornness, and he truly was a bit curious, so in a momentary slip of control, he snuck a glance out of the corner of his eye. This single glance burned him to a perfect crisp. An excerpt of Regret of Twinshan, Part 37, Flirtation in the Water Prison. Shen Qingqiu shook his head, voice slurred as he spoke. Wo Binghe, you, let me go. Shi Cun, now you're crying for me to let you go, he said with a wicked laugh. <laughs> Back then, did you even think this day would come? Shen Qingqiu sobbed and sobbed. Wo Binghe felt some sympathy for him, but he soon remembered how Shen Qingqiu had abandoned him, and his hatred rose yet again. Cold and merciless, he plunged inside once more. Tears rolled down Shen Qingqiu's face like raindrops on flower petals, his breath hitching in gasps, but his hands were tied, and even as he twisted and struggled in vain, he was unable to escape. Excerpt End Shen Qingqiu couldn't speak. Holy shit! Was this guy crying like raindrops on flower petals? And who was Mr. Tall, Dark and Deadly? The one who cried the most every time they got in bed was Lo Bing He, okay? He looked at the author's name. Sleeping Willow Flower. The name alone made him sound like some sort of scoundrel. He had to be the same sort of person as airplane shooting towards the sky. After Lo Bing He finished reading, he said, As for this disciple... He never could have forced you like this. If Shi Cun merely furrowed his brow, this disciple wouldn't have been able to continue. How could I let Shi Cun sob like this, yet still not stop? The depiction here is a bit unrealistic. Not only was it unrealistic, it was OOC. Completely OOC. OOC all the way off the map. This fucking regret of Twinshan, it was basically trashy RP fanfic that was OOC to the heavens, yet it had somehow become so popular. No wonder he always heard girls say, quote, the trashier a work, the more easily it becomes a niche hit. But that wasn't the main point. Shen Qingqiu cursed the author of this to be unable to get it up for the rest of his life. Single dog, it served him right to have to jerk it to the end of his days, to jerk it until he died, forever unable to find a wife. Why is Shi Cun's face going all red and white? asked Luo Binghe. The later parts are even more tempestuous and thrilling. They're worth of both cheers and applause. In truth, I revered Shi Cun's body like a holy object in those five years and never dared to sully it in the slightest. But this is just a little booklet circulating in the streets. It can't hurt to read and laugh at such fantastical takes. Shen Qingqiu eyed the title of this part, Regret of Chunshan, Part 47, Five Years of Empty Waiting. The candlelight flickered. Even if Shen Qingqiu was insensate, his brows were dark and his lips were red. His entire person died with a flush of spring. Lo Binghe looped Shen Qingqiu's nerveless arms around his own neck before he went to kiss him.
to make it look as if Shen Qingzhou had woken up and was hooking his arms around Luo Bingzhe's neck to return the kiss. The curtains hung to the floor, swaying without a breeze. Amidst a desperate entanglement, toused clothes rustled to the ground. Shen Qingzhou splayed lifelessly on top of Luo Binghe. Except end. Shen Qingzhou was going to cry. This wasn't even, quote, out of the question. This was practically a challenge to basic values and the limits of morality. And he'd heard Empreg novels were very popular on the Green JJ. Heavens protect me. Please don't let regret of Chunchan have a pregnancy arc too, thank you. As the pages flipped by, he would yet be struck by lightning from the heavens. Excerpt, Regret of Chunshan, Part 55, Heavenly Demons, Nefarious Blood. Luo Binghe could feel the tender supple skin of the person in his arms. He was moist and glowing as they soaked in the mountain spring. Without a word, he embraced Shen Qingqiu and leaned down to kiss him deeply, though Shen Qingqiu was unwilling. The heavenly demon's blood stirred within his stomach, and his entire body went weak. In addition, he was being kissed until he couldn't breathe, his chest rising up and down in uneven intervals. Not long afterward, Shen Qingqiu caught his breath and scolded him through his tears. Get out! Lobinger smiled. Shi Zun chides me so. Shen Qingqiu clenched his teeth, and willing to give in. If you hadn't fed me that poison blood, how could I be so tormented by an ingrat like you? Under the control of heavenly demon's blood, there he drew him into an interlocked embrace below the open sky. Excerpt end. Shen Jingqiu had nothing to say. Drugging. Nongkong. Force. What a marvellous buffet. This author was having a lot of fun, weren't they? Actually, I never imagined that heavenly demon's blood could be used in such a way, said Luo Binghe. Shen Jingqiu was silent. After bearing witness to the depths of the original proud immortal demon ways to pravity, it wasn't as if he had never thought of it. He just never expected that one day this usage would be applied to him. My eyes have been opened, said Shen Qingqiu. Luo Binghe nodded. My eyes have been opened. And he continued. So... This disciple can't have had his eyes opened for nothing, can he? Luo oh, Binghe, even though this master has allowed you to, I never allowed you all this variety, Shen Qingqiu said in a warning tone. Luo well, Binghe started, Oh, this disciple understands. He looked a bit disappointed, but he didn't push the issue. Now Shen Qingqiu was the one feeling uneasy. Luo Binghe had never made any requests of him when it came to these matters. Because of his luckluster skill, he was always cautious in the extreme, and he even somewhat capitulated to Shen Qingqiu. Now he had finally acquired some instructional materials and found a bit of self-confidence to try them out together, only for Shen Qingqiu to toss a basin of cold water over his head. Shen Qingqiu squirmed in his seat. After a while, he finally picked up his fan to cover his face and said, with some reserve, How do you want to do it?